Okay. So today I will continue using the notions we introduced last time. So essentially we had, um, um, we had introduced the um, matrix structure we will use for the entire course in the complex, in the extended complex plane. Um, we introduced a notion of convergence of series and we also observed that given a sequence of complex numbers, We can also consider, put it this, it's very difficult to see. Oh, is it very difficult? Okay. So if we have a, a sequence of complex numbers, we have the notion of convergence of this sequence. And we also consider the sequence of sums. up to the nth element. This is also a sequence of complex numbers, right? So we consider this sequence as well. And we can also say that this sequence is convergent or not. If this is the case, we, we define the limit to be this. OK, I can also put the 0 here, so I put Okay, and we call it a series. So the infinite sum is, if it exists and is a complex number, not not infinite. The limit uh, so n tends to plus infinity of S n. And when this is a finite number, okay, when this series converges, we have the possibility to check if the series is convergent using, for instance, the Cauchy criterion. Uh, we know that the, um, this, the metric space we have is complete, so we can check it. Good. I want to uh, leave you as an exercise that if summation of ZK exists, equivalently if limit of the partial sums is finite, then okay, the nth element tends to zero, so it cannot increase. Huh? Actually, it tends to zero, right? As n tends to infinity. So the sums are made with, ad, uh, with the elements which are infinitesimal. Good, so this is an exercise. For you. Um, Together with the notion of convergence of series, we also the convergence of the associated real series. That is to say, we can also consider <coughs> the series of the modulus of ZK. And this is, since ZK is a real number, this is a series over the reals. If this exists, then we say that the series is absolutely convergent, okay? Or in absolute value. That's, that's the reason why it's called absolutely convergence, okay? Uh, this notion is important because we can prove the following fact. Call it proposition. It's less than three, page two. So if ZK 
is absolutely convergent then it is convergent. Correct? There's nothing special. In some sense, this is the same as in the, in the real case. And the reason, say, a very sketchy proof is the following. Well, we have to consider <coughs> the convergence of what? Sorry. The convergence of this series, Z0 plus Zn, of, of this sequence, right? On the other hand, we know that this sorry this is convergent by assumption so to prove that the, that the, the, the series s the series sorry the series is convergent that is to say that the, the sequence of sn the partial sums is convergent suffices it to prove that it satisfies this inequality for n m greater of, uh, of a certain m we have this right well, what is this so if we prove this we have the, the assertion and what is this? Well, this is summation, say, assume that n is smaller than m, k from n to m, okay, of uh, Sn, you correct, correct. Sorry, if uh, n is great, uh, n is smaller than m, so we have exactly the opposite, right? m plus 1 to n, right? So we have a, a sorry, zk, okay, and this is a finite sum. And because of the triangle inequality, we can say that this is smaller or equal to this. m plus, plus 1. m plus 1. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, n is smaller than m, right? So we are summing from n plus 1 to m. Sorry, uh, sorry, 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 yes, sure. Thank you. Yes. n plus 1 to m, correct. And this is, in fact, smaller than epsilon. Okay, because of the previous exercise, if you want. So we have this check. So absolutely convergence guarantees convergence, as in the real case. Good. Okay. Okay. So now we go back to some notion which is real, and is the following. Consider a sequence of real numbers all right as you all know this is not uh, always the case that the sequence is either convergent or divergent hmm? there are some other possibilities hmm? if you don't add any other hypothesis you can have that the sequence, for instance, minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 has no limit on one side. On the other, it's not divergent. So there are some criteria for it. Monotonicity guarantees, for instance, the existence of a limit, finite if the, the, the set is finite, or infinite. So convergence or divergence of the, series, of the sequence. In any case, you, we can define it has also always a meaning the limb soup and the limb inf of this sequence. It 
These two numbers always exist, possibly being minus infinity, plus infinity and minus infinity, plus infinity and minus infinity. Mm -hmm. And if the limit exists, lim sup and lim inf coincide. Mm -hmm. Good. So lim inf is, we'll use lim sup actually more, also indicated in this way, which I don't like for obvious reasons in some books like this. And lim inf is, I don't like this because there is some, uh, well, can be misleading with the, the conjugate. We prefer to use the, the, the uh, overline only for conjugation. In any case, I think that you have the, well, this is the limit of Rn. In any case, this is the limb as uh, n tends to plus infinity of the soup, right? Limb soup is the limit of the soup, uh, yes, sir. of Rn, Rn plus 1, and that's it. And here is the limb as n tends to plus infinity of the inferior. That's why this is limb inf, okay, Rn. So we always have that this number exists, these two numbers exist, and this is greater or equal to this. Okay? All right. I don't want to bother you again with the standard stuff. You pro yes, please. This is the real case. In real analysis, nothing. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just recalling you some facts from real analysis. Nothing special. Well, we can, we can use, we can use, uh, if you want to know why, and I, I recall, well, I don't want to, to, as I said, I don't want to bother you with properties of some of uh, sequences. I want to use this limb soup for the uh, um, um, sequences of the modules of complex numbers, okay? So, in order to apply the properties of real numbers. And you will see in a few minutes the reason why. Okay, I just want you to recall, okay, this, this problem. And just to have something uh, put here. So, indeed, what I, what I want to start from is the following. We have considered sum of complex numbers. So starting from a sequence of numbers, we have this, the sums of these numbers, and this gives you another sequence of complex numbers. And we consider the convergence of this second sequence of com complex numbers. Now, we can also think of a sequence of functions of complex valued functions, right? and then sum them, because you can sum, okay, the complex numbers. Now the point is, if the function depends on a complex number, is it always the case, choosing z in the complex realm, that the series of the sums is convergent? This is not always true, as we'll see. So the next task is to define, so to describe in which set z can be taken in order to have convergence of a uh, sequence of sums of complex valued functions. So before continuing, let me just uh, recall you another inspiring, in some sense, the fundamental examples we all know, probably. Mm -hmm. So let me recall you that from the real, then you change a little bit. We have this sequence called a k to be z to the power k. k okay, natural numbers. This, has, this is meaningful because we can multiply z times z k times. Hmm? So this is nothing but z times z k times, k times, which means that this is the kth power, okay? So associated to this sequence of a k's, we also have Sn, 
which is the sum of 1, which is z naught, a, a naught, sorry, z to the power 0 plus z plus z squared plus plus z n. Correct? And we wonder if we can express this, and this is one of the few cases where you can do this. This sum, this sequence of sums in terms of z. Hmm? And as you probably all remember, this is 1 minus z, the power n plus 1 over 1 minus z. Right? So that it is much easier than to consider uh, the limit of this uh, sum of objects to consider the limit of this, which is a fraction of complex value functions. So notice that this is a um, power of complex of a complex number. There are no coefficient in front. The generalization of this is, of course, to consider something like this summation of so to consider uh, B K to be A K times z minus a to the power k, with a k being a complex number, a being something different from 0. So in the previous example, we have a k, all the a k's equal to 1, a equal to 0. But in some sense, well, the fact that we are considering z minus a instead of z is not very important. We consider, for instance, this change of variables putting w, z minus a, we have, well, that bk is ak times w to the power k. So the, the great difference is that we put some coefficient in front of the power. OK? And this coefficient is, in general, complex, not necessarily real. OK? So what do we know about convergence of the series Sn written here? By the way, you probably all heard of the legend, or legend, or story, actually. Or it's not a legend, it's a story. This, this formula was uh, obtained by, by Gauss hmm? when he was uh, very young, right? OK, good. Good to know, OK? This, uh, and it can be, in fact, obtained, as he did, by considering that, well, if you take, well, let me make this small digression. If you consider Sn, like here, so I, I copy this. And if you consider Sn plus 1, it's the same, right? Up to. Then you multiply by z this, and you attain everything from here to here. Correct? So then you make the, the subtract, and you obtain this formula here. This is the, the, the idea. Because uh, Gauss was asked to sum up to the first uh, th sequence, right? the arithmetic sequence. Sure, sure, of course. He was very young. He didn't have, the, well, but the, the same procedure works fine. But he, because he was bothering the teacher, right? Because he was very smart in calculations. And so the teacher said, OK, now sum up the numbers from 1 to 5,000. And he answered immediately. He said, how do you do this? Well, there is a general formula. No. <laughs> Say, good to know this, OK? Anyway, so here, in this expression, it is evident that this number can be very big or very small in modulus according to the fact that the modulus of z is greater than 1 or smaller than 1. Correct? Remember that we have, we're not, uh, I'm not cheating you, OK? We're not abusing any uh, formula up to now, because we have 
the, uh, the Moivre formula, okay? You can see this. Since the modulus of a number smaller than one is smaller than one, and the nth power of this number is the nth power, sorry, the nth power has a modulus, which is the nth power of the modulus, this decreases if the modulus of a starting number is smaller than one, correct? This, this is real analysis. And if it is greater than one in modulus, this number, okay, of course, this number, this real number increases. And so it cannot convert as a complex number as well. Remember that we have um, uh, characterized the zero in the complex number as the complex number with zero modulus. It's the only number with zero modulus. So if we prove that the modulus tends to zero, it's enough. We don't care if the convergence is in some spiral or on a line, but well, this is important fact. And on the other hand, if this converges, so this number tends to zero, as, and, and it is clear that the condition modulus of this more than one is sufficient to conclude this, well, the limit is one over one minus z. Okay, which is meaningful for any z, but not for z equal to one. So, in some sense, this example shows you the following. So, we have the, we have found that we can take an open set, a disk. In this case, the disk has radius one. And for any z inside this disk, you have convergence. And you have an. Uh, uh, you have uh, an explicit expression of the limit of the series. When z has modules greater than one, the series is divergent. Nothing can be said about the convergence of the series when the modules of the taken z is equal to one. Okay, and in fact, for z equal to one itself, this has no meaning. Let me point out that, of course, this is nothing but, uh, um, oh, I have to put here, three, third lesson number four. This is nothing new for you, I guess. And in fact, this was known also for the real numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Same considerations, and you conclude in the same way. The only point is that in the real numbers, you can see that there is an abstraction to consider all right, so let me put this way. There is an abstraction when considering complex numbers of modulus one in the complex case, and there is an abstraction of taking real numbers of modulus one, there are only two, minus one and one. You see this on the Gauss plane? Okay, so, and when you restrict to the real case, the same series, is convergent when z is real, when z is in here, which is the intersection of the real axis with the unit open disk. And it is also reasonable to say that nothing can be concluded when we take a real number of, of modulus one, because when it is one, in fact, the, the limit does not exist. Hmm? With some manipulation, we can also consider as a limit this number here. Uh, say, assume that z, when z is real, write is x instead of z, right? So we take instead of one minus x to the denominator one plus x. And this can be written as the series where x Sorry. Okay. It's taken. So take minus z and the previous expression, and you will see that the limit is one over one plus z when this limit exists. So when modulus of x is smaller than one. And well, up to here, nothing changed. So instead of having a singularity here, you have a singularity here. Say, so, well, what's the difference? Well, with another slight modification, you can consider this limit 
of the series if I'm not mistaken. So I consider x squared here, so here everything is 2k as a, as a power exponent, exponent, sorry. And here, in the real case, you don't see the reason why modulus of x has to be smaller than 1, because there is no, well, this number never vanish, never vanishes in the real. Well, it vanishes, of course, in the complex case. It vanishes here and here. Okay, so this is one of the explanations why, considering the, the real uh, case, you have only a partial view of the of the of this of this um, phenomenon. Okay, well, just just to just to. okay. Anyway, let go back to the example and well, first give a, let us give this definition, and the definition is the following. So let us. Consider the generic case. I want to write it down at least once. So we said that the example we consider so far is just a simple example of a more general case of um, series we will consider, and it is the following. This is called power series. Um, and A is called the center of the power series. So we also say the power series is centered at A of, of complex numbers. Okay? Where uh, all the elements which appear in this expression are complex. Okay, in general. So the task, and for our purposes, it will be important to have this information, is to describe when and how and under which condition this has a meaning. This is a number, okay? Given a z, you can obtain, so this is a function. And as I said uh, last time, functions uh, were not rules uh, in the past, but essentially were extension of polynomials, so series, okay? So the, the complex case, in the complex case in, special, in particular, <coughs> function were considered as power series. Hmm? Next function, good. So uh, there is another interpretation of this, uh, of this series, and I will give it here. So assume that we have a family of complex valued functions. Nothing is assumed about A. A is a set, okay? And K varies in the, in the natural numbers, okay? Well, we can always consider this series, this, sorry, this, pardon, this sequence, summation, take an element A in A, so K varies from 0 to N, this is a sum of complex numbers, right? How can we do this? Well, we can do this because C has a uh, structure of group. Huh? So we have a sum in C, and we can sum it. And we consider now <coughs> this infinite series, or this way. So there are several definitions of convergence for a series of functions. Why are we considering functions? Well, because in the previous, let me go back to the previous 
notion. We can also interpret this each of this addendum here summoned as a function. It is a function. It is complex valued function definitely and just by, by chance it is also a, a function of a complex variable. Okay. So forget this and this is the fk in, in this specific example. Right? So let me give it in the more generic uh, way I can now. So we have this series. What does it mean that it converges at A? Well, at A it means that the sum, the, sorry, the sequence Sn has a limit when the, the, the sum is evaluated at A. So it is, okay, A is fixed, you consider Fk of A is a complex number, then you consider this, the associated series. What do we mean when we say, when we say pointwise convergence in A? We repeat the same uh, property for any A in A, correct? Now, what do we mean when we say that this series is absolutely convergent at the point A? Well, again, we remember that associated to this series of complex numbers, when fk is evaluated at a, the associated series of moduli is a series of real numbers. We study the convergence of the, uh, this series of, com of uh, real numbers, and then we uh, conclude that if the series of real num of the moduli converges, then the the, com the convergence of the, the series said to be absolute, okay, or in absolute value. There is another convergence which is also very important to know, notion of one, the uniform convergence, right? Do you, do you have a notion of uniform convergence? Well, I think that in, also in real analysis is fundamental. You say that you probably know that if you have a sequence of continuous functions and you consider the uniform convergence on a set, of course, a sequence of, uh, sequence of um, continuous function on a set. So we have topology and so on. Okay, now, now we are not assuming a day as a topology, but we have to we want to have a notion of continuity. Okay. So the un uniform limit or the un uniform convergence guarantees that the limit is the limit of a continuous function or a sequence of continuous function is continuous. For instance. How do we write con uniform con convergence in this special case? Well, we can say that the, the sequence is, is uniformly convergent in A if for any epsilon positive, and uh, there exists a capital N such that for any N and M greater than N, we have that Sn A minus Sm A is smaller than epsilon for any A in A, correct? So uniformly means without any dependence from the point A chosen in A. All right. Um, there is another uh, notion. Uh, well, maybe, maybe this this terminology can be standard. This is not standard. I think that normal convergence is somehow, or normality property is, because normal comes out in several, in several fields in mathematics. So normal is, well, in this, in this special uh, definition, it means that you can control each fn of z as z varies in a set B of A with, sorry, fk, with a constant number mk, okay, and mk is, is of course, real number, positive real number. So mk has to be a positive real number. And we say that, well, 
the sequence, the, the, sorry, the, the series converges normally if the series associated of MKs is convergent in the real sense. And the, I, I, and, well, I probably will use it sometimes. Hmm? And probably we don't need a special definition for this because it is, mm, well, just an application of, of other uh, um, comparison theorems to be, to be applied just to have this. In, in any case, in some books you can find it, um, this is the Weierstrass M test. The use of letter M is not, not uh, by chance because normally so we call it M test or Weierstrass M test. So you test that the series of function is convergent using the fact that you know that you can control the moduli of the summons using a constant depending on the, the index and not depending on Z when Z varies in a subset. Last thing I, I had to say just uh, at the very beginning of this talk. Never use the index i in complex analysis for summations. Okay, this is just—it's not compulsory. It's not, uh, but it's, a, it's warmly recommended. Okay, not to use i. That's why I use k. Uh, I will use other letters. You, of course, it's up to you, but don't use i. And it, it's obvious why. Okay. Finally, of course, if the series is not is not convergent, well, it is divergent. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, going back to what we had uh, obtained, let me let me prove this first important result. Okay. Uh, so, first, consider a power series expansion. Okay, k z minus a to the power k. Okay. And then consider the number modulus of AK, which is a real number. And take the kth root of this number. OK? And define. Actually, calculate the lim soup. That's why I had to recall you this definition. Lim soup always exists. A lim is not guaranteed, but lim soup exists, and it can be plus infinity because this number here is non-negative, right? So we have three possibilities: either this is plus infinity, or it is zero, or it is. What I mean? Oh. Or it is a, a number. Yes, sure. Call it L, right? In any case, we have one of these one of these results. So the, the, the limit lim soup exists. And the first case we say that R is zero, whatever R will mean, we'll say. Pardon me. When R when this uh, lim soup is zero, r is plus infinity. And when the lim soup of a, the kth power of a k is l, is a finite number, real number, we call that r is one over l. Okay? In some sense, this is the definition with the extension for these two cases in the obvious way. Okay. So that we can say that 1 over r is lim soup of a k 1 over k as k tends to plus infinity with the convention that r is 0 when this is plus infinity and r is plus infinity, OK, when this limit is 0, correct? So this is an associated number to the uh, power series considered. So the theorem goes back. This is a, a, 
uh, result due to Hadamard and is the following. Now, assume you have the power expansion as before and define R to be 1 over lim soup of with the convention okay if uh, as as uh, with this, with the convention we have adopted us so far right so r is 0 when this number is plus infinity so the denominator diverges then r is 0 when r is plus infinity means that this number tends to 0 then <clears throat> this number is in fact a measure of the ray sent of, of the of the circle centered at a for which z has to be considered to have a convergent power expansion. This is the meaning of the, the symbol R. So if so if Z and C is such that modulus of Z minus A is greater than R, then the series diverges and if z and c is such that z minus a is smaller than r then the series converges and something more is added. If you take, assume that this number here, R is positive. So assume that R exists and is positive, and take a positive real number between 0 and R. You can always do this. Then, in particular, if R is smaller, it's smaller than capital R, and Z minus A is smaller than that end, okay? Then the series converges uniformly in this disk, okay? This is the, 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 the uh, content of Adamar theorem. As we will see, the, the proof is quite easy. And keep in mind the example, the fundamental example. And the fundamental example, all AKs, all the coefficients were real. Well, this is not very important because we are considering the moduli. So. Um, but we somehow we consider the modulus of all this part here. And it had to be smaller. So if we had a power, each, each um, the, the base of this power had to be smaller than 1 to, to guarantee convergence. In this case, we don't have a power because this is the number times something which is to some power. But when you consider, you see here, the, sorry, you consider the kth root, and you substitute, imagine to substitute this fact inside here, you are considering the kth power of this number times z minus a prepared power k. When you consider the moduli, you are very close to the example given before. So in some sense, we are 
trying to find a balance of the way this number is increasing with this number, but not this number, this number, okay? This is not uh, the kth power of something, but the modulo of this is the kth power of this number, okay? This is the leading idea. Uh, okay, uh, just another small remark. Nothing is said about the uh, convergence or divergence of the series when the modulus of z minus a is equal to r. So when we are, like in the case uh, of the fundamental example, precisely on the, on the, on the, on the boundary, okay, of the sequence. And notice that because of a geometric property we are considering, the modulus does not depend on the argument, right? We all have, we always have uh, um, disks, something which does not depend on the argument, it depends only on the modules. Mm -hmm. So that's why this R associated to the series, uh, the power series expansion is called radius of convergence. It can be zero, it can be infinite, so in this case the entire plane is disk, otherwise it is a disk centered at A. And for this Z, with the property here, this series defines a function. So we are, in some sense, describing the set where analytic or power, say, power exp complex power expansion exists as functions. When the radius is zero, it means that, well, Nothing can be said about convergence except for one point. And there are examples. The example, the fundamental example shows you that, well, you have exam we have a series where the convergence is guaranteed only in a small radius. And we'll show you also examples of functions which are defined on the entire complex plane, which, re which <coughs> with this terminology, have radius of convergence infinite, okay? So now, let us see the proof and then I give you the examples. So we're at page three, number 10. So first of all, for the sake of simplicity, as I said previously, we can always assume that A is zero. This is not uh, without loss of generality we can do this because instead of considering we can always transform this into A K W to the power K where Z minus A is W. Geometrically, we are just shifting everything from A to the origin, but the consideration for convergence is independent from shifting, okay? We're taking a disk or something different, but it's not affected by any translation, okay? So this is just for the sake of simplicity. Good, now, <clears throat> assume that R, uh, is given and take modulus of z smaller than r, okay, r positive. Uh, we are considering convergence in a disk. So a is zero, so this is exactly the, the condition we are, have to prove to be sufficient for convergence of the series, right? Correct? Good. <clears throat> now, since these are two real numbers, we can always take a raw real number such that modulus of z is smaller than raw and smaller than r. Okay? And we observe that in the, with this choice of r, when 1 over r is smaller than 1 over raw. Remember that 1 over r is the limb soup of the 
nth root of the a case, right? That is to say, <coughs> there exist a certain n such that for any n greater than n, we have that a k, so a certain k greater than n, that a k has, uh, has the kth root of its modulus smaller than 1 over rho. Right? Now, what do we have? We have, as I said, keep in mind that we are balancing the growth of w, c minus a, to the power k, and the growth of the modulus of AK, the kth root of 1 over k, right? So we have a summation of AK as a k take the modulus of the, the summons, and this is smaller or equal of what? This is smaller or equal of 1 rho to the power n times z to the power s, uh, k, z to the power k. Correct? From this, in fact, we have that modulus of a k is smaller than 1 over rho. What do I mean? Yes, def yeah, sure. K, same. Okay, good, good point. Okay, let me let me remark that. Uh, well, of of course it's correct. When you consider a series, you are consider an infinite sum. Correct. So what is important to control is the infinite part. So call it the tail or whatever. So for, if you prove that something is converging from certain n, it's enough. Because the other summons have a finite sum by definition. Correct? So you have only some extra elements that you have to sum, but they are finite. Their contribution can be only finite. So the difficult part to prove is that infinite. OK, so correct. This is not true in general. Let's say k greater than n. But this is enough to guarantee that the entire series is convergent, OK? Why is it convergent? Because we, are, we haven't proved that the, 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 the series is convergent. Well, so uh, from n to infinity, these uh, numbers are controlled by these other numbers. And this number here, not by accident, but on purpose, we have taken, remember, rho to be greater than modulus of z, so that this number here is, in fact, convergent. Sorry, convergent smaller than 1, and therefore this series is convergent because of the previous considerations. Right? This is a real number. So if you want, in this case I can say we can use the M test <laughs> and prove it. I conclude this. Okay. So thank you for the, the remark. I sometimes abuse the notation and say, well, this is true for any n, for any k greater than n, then for convergence consideration, it's enough okay, to conclude everything. OK? So this is, because this is smaller than 1 for this assumption, then we conclude that this is convergent, and then absolutely convergent, and then convergent. So we have a ser series of implications which guarantees that the series we started from, the, the power is function, uh, is in fact convergent. Well, slight modification of the argument applied so far guarantees that, well, if we have, as I said, z smaller than r and smaller than capital R. Well, we repeat the same argument putting an, a row in between 
the two R's, same considerations as before, and then instead of having the inequality as before, depending on modulus of z to the power k, we have modulus of uh, r over rho All right? So this is greater than n. And as you see, this is smaller than 1 because rho is greater than r. So this is convergent because it is a, uh, because it's a power expansion. Uh, it's a, uh, sorry, the power series with uh, base smaller than 1. And as you see here, independently on the choice of z. In the previous consideration, well, we had convergence, but depending on the modulus of z. And finally, well, the reverse, uh, uh, if z is modulus greater than r, capital R, so it's bigger than the radius of convergence, you put a row in between then you obtain the other inequality with something which diverges from below, right? So you have an estimate like this, summation of a k z k, k greater than, is greater than summation of uh, summation rho over r, the power k, and this number here is greater than one, right? So this cannot converge because by comparison theorem, right, somehow it's close to the lift theorem, right? Okay, this diverges and this diverges. So I cannot be finite, hmm? say it this way. Now, this is Adam, so, up to now, we have a criterion to say, well, we can consider power series, complex power series, and say when these are functions or not. So we have a domain of definition. It can be empty. It can be one point. It can be a disk. It can be an entire, like an entire um, complex plane. But we have something, OK? Now, um, I'll make you calculate some radii of convergence. Um, before continuing, uh, let me recall you that, well, there are some other properties. Can be useful. Assume that, well, you start from, as we did, such a power expansion, and assume that uh, assume that this limit exists. Yes. No, no, no. Okay. Okay. If I, okay, I have to repeat the question, you know, for some reasons. So. Uh, the question is about the mm, consequences of taking Z greater than R, right? So probably I, 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 I did it uh, quite quickly, but what I'm saying is that if you take Z whose modulus is greater than R, you can always have such an estimate, correct? So the moduli of the tail of the series 
cannot be finite because you have an inequality here. Assume that you are considering partial sums. These partial sums here diverge to infinity. What I'm saying is that, well, this implies that the infinite part of the series from certain n to infinity has a modulus which is not finite. You are correct, you are correct, but the series cannot converge. Are you with me or not? So, okay, now thank you for your question. Let's go back to the fundamental example. Right? The fundamental example is the leading example for, no, it is what we actually use here, right? When you have the sum, so remember that this is 1 minus z right? And we want to prove convergence of this function here. We are considering z, it has to be smaller than 1. Otherwise, the modulus of this number here is divergent. No, but look, look, we can reduce, we can reduce the general problem to this situation. Probably I, I, I didn't write it explicitly, so maybe it is worth repeating it. When you have this, okay, we started with this example, okay? The basic example was the following, correct? And for this, everything is understood. Modulus of z greater than one, no convergence. Modulus is more than one, Convergence modulus is equal to one, nothing can be said. Okay. Now we somehow generalize this position by taking this. Right? Well, the fact that we are already assuming that A is equal to Z, so the center is zero is not important for our consideration, right? Because the radius doesn't depend on the center. Good. Now call A K Z, okay, now we have to, to reproduce something, okay? So the modulus of a k to z power k, okay, uh, I want it to write it this way, okay? A k, 1 over k, uh, z, sorry. Can I write it this way? So, and this is, call it the modulus of W. So, the consideration given before is independent of the argument, and that's explain you why the radius of convergence is related to the limb soup of this number. If it is smaller than one, greater than one, okay? So more greater than this number or smaller than this number, which guarantees. Okay, maybe if if you don't mind, okay, if I, I'm not convincing you, it's better if we have uh, an extra talk somewhere somewhere later. Okay. Okay. So um, let me continue. New. Yeah, yet it was a kind of exercise I wanted to leave you. So assume that this limit exists, okay? And uh, well, show that L is the radius of convergence. 
ten years ago, uh, two conversion trips, that they, that they run in, in short now, uh, they can get uh, through uh, the coaching uh, a case to test. And this they can be actually obtained from uh, the ratio test. test. This is the ratio test for convergence, right. Yeah. Okay. But if for you is is a no consequence, well, it's okay. Maybe so for so some. Even, even the theorem that they are testing about, okay, can really be obtained from. Sure, the that's what I what I try exactly. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we have some. Um, we have some time. Okay. Um, in 20 minutes, I want to give you an example of a series whose register convergence is uh, plus infinity. We have an example of a series, uh, power series, which exists and is converging only for C smaller than certain value, finite value. And, well, the example I'm, I'm thinking about is, well, the complex exponential. How can we, well, it is a very important function in complex analysis. How can we define complex exponential? We have, of course, the notion of complex, sorry, of a uh, real exponential function. Uh, we can introduce uh, the exponential in several ways. But essentially, we can characterize the exponential in this way. So it is the only function which has this property, f prime of x is equal to f of x, and, okay, so this characterizes, well, this is, in fact, a differential equation, and this implies that f of x is e to the power x. Now, from, the, from this definition, we also know that E of x is real analytic, correct? And it has an expansion. What's the expansion of E of, e of x? So the exponential somehow, I also use this notation, is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus xn over and factorial plus so four. So when you don't know what to do <laughs> in general, well, start to test what you have in mind from the real case and simply substitute the x with the z, okay? And try. So I wonder if I'm doing a mistake considering, say, exp, use a capital E, okay, to distinguish the other of z, to be an extension over the complex numbers in this way. I consider, well, this is, in fact, uh, it's a power series, right? Summations of xk over k factorial. Correct? And, well, I just wonder if doing this, I'm doing something silly or not. This is power expansion, a complex power expansion, for sure, no, no problem. Huh? Centered at the origin, good. Coefficients are real. Hmm? So it's in particular, say so we have that AK is one of the K factorial. So what is the limb soup of modulus of AK? Well, modulus of AK is AK in this, in this case because AK is, is real and positive. What is the limb soup of modulus of AK of K? What is it? Well, this is the limb soup of k of 1 over 
kth root of kth factorial. So factorial is faster than the 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 the, the, the root. Huh? So com by comparison, by a comparison argument, we can conclude that this number here, the denominator, diverges. Hmm? So that this limb soup is zero, and hence the radius of convergence of the function x plus z is plus infinity. So it's entire. And as you can see, it is, well, it is well defined. So for any z, you can define a function. You can, sorry, for any z, it has a meaning to consider the function x, z as defined here. Correct? What you cannot do at this stage is to prove or to, to look for a similar condition that a similar condition holds for the complex explanation, because we still don't have any notion of derivative. We see that, well, of course, this condition is true, which means that the first coefficient is 1. A0 is 1. Okay? But nothing can be said about the second. So the, the first, sorry, the, the, other, the other one. Correct? So before continuing, let me just uh, use this uh, notation for for the sequel. Okay, let us start from a series, power series, the general one. Okay. And assume that it has radius of convergent R. Okay. We have examples, though the, the, this set is not empty. Hmm? Now we consider another series. From this, we obtain another one, which is called, which was called by the, the, the first researchers in this field, the derived power series. Yeah. Derived. So it is derived from this one, okay? Derived power series. Right. Given this power series with radius of convergence R, the derived power series is the following. Summation for k, great. And then we consider k, a k, z minus a, k minus 1. k, sorry. Yeah, we have k greater or equal to 0. And here, this, the derived series, power series, uh, as uh, uh, index is going from one to infinity. This is, well, this is uh, historically the introduction of the right power series. What do we know about the radius of convergence of this derived power series? Is it the same? Yes, it is. Luckily, because I hope that everybody remembers that this series, this sorry, this uh, sequence tends to one. All right, because of this, we conclude that the derived power series has radius. Convergence R. Convergence R. So the same radius of convergence of the, the power series we started from, which was called the primitive power series. Okay? 
So this terminology, of course, went in use also in other, in other topics. But it, it now we want to show you that, well, it's not by chance that these are called deriv der derived and primitive. So you expect that there is a relation with some analytic uh, operation on, uh, on functions, which mean which are supposed to be the natural one. So derivation and integration, right? So you say primitive of a function, a function which is the property whose its derivative is the function, the given function, or vice versa. The derived function is the derivative of another one. Okay. Now, and this is the, exactly the case in complex analysis, as we will see. So surprisingly enough, this is, this is the case. So first, let me observe that the derived power series is obtained by derivating, whatever it means, the term by term, uh, so if, if you, if you say, say this way, if you apply just what you know from the real case and say, I want to consider this is a power and I apply the rule of derivation of a power without knowing a z is a real number, complex number, whatever, modify the exponent, subtract one to the exponent, right? And multiply the coefficient by k. So it is the, I'll say, the term by term derivation of a power series. Hmm? Now I want to show you that the derived power series is in fact the derivative of this function. When it exists, it has a meaning. Well, it is complex differentiable in the sense that the limit of the incremental ratio exists. And the two notions coincide. Okay? All right. So, So we consider use this notation, okay? F of Z to be the starting power series, which is a function when Z is such that Z minus A is smaller than Assume that we have power series expansion. We can calculate the, the, the radius of convergence. Then we take z such that z minus a is small, in modulus is smaller than r. And this defines a function. For any z and this disk, you have an output, which is a complex number. Now we define also f1 of z to be this other series expansion, the derived series expansion, which exists as a function, complex value function, when z has, is in the same disk as you observed before. Okay? And then the next task is to consider this. incremental ratio of f when uh, z minus uh, a is smaller than r and z naught minus a is smaller than r. Otherwise, it doesn't have any meaning. Right? What does it mean? Well, it means that as, as soon as z is different from z naught, uh, this number can be calculated, right? Because it is the quotient of two complex numbers. This is a complex number. This is a complex number, different from zero. Well, we can calculate this. And it is a function, right? Now, f of z. We 
can be also written this way, summation of the first nth terms and then the tail. So I consider a naught plus a1 z minus a plus a2 z minus a square plus a n z minus a to the power n. And this is a polynomial of the first n terms in the power expansion. And unfortunately, well, we call it an uh, Sn of z. And then we remember that, of course, this is not always the case. That the, 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 well, it can be huh, that we are considering a polynomial. But in general, we have an infinite power expansion. <coughs> so an infinite power series, sorry. And then we consider the rest to be denoted by Rn of z. What is Rn of z? Rn of z is f of z minus Sn of z. Correct? <laughs> so just to, to come back to, to what you pointed out before, in this case, we know that this series converges when z minus a has modulus smaller than r. But what we have to control in case we had to is this part, the modulus of this, not the modulus of this. Because this gives you just a finer contribution to, uh, to the sum. Okay. So I don't think we can complete the proof, but just to um, to to give you an idea, uh, let us consider this. So when I write f of z minus f of z naught over z minus z naught, I'm actually writing s n of z plus r n of z. Okay, with the notation so far introduced. So the sum up to the nth term plus the tail. I call it tail, okay, because normally it's the infinite part minus Sn of z minus Rn of z naught over z minus z naught. And I can also write it in this way. Sn of z, sorry, z naught, right? Minus Sn of z naught over z minus z naught plus Rn of z minus Rn of z naught over z minus z naught. Nothing special. How uh, are well, using S, this, the, the notation Sn and Rn for f, hmm? what is the relationship with the function f1 of z, the, the derived function? The derived function was, sorry, the, the, derived, the derived power uh, series is the one obtained this way, okay? Well, first of all, uh, Recall that f1 of z is summation of k, a k, z minus a, k minus 1. Okay. And Since Sn of z is a naught plus a one z minus a plus a n z minus a n, which is a polynomial, we define <coughs> S prime n z to be a1 plus 2, uh, a2, z minus a plus, plus 
n a n z minus a n minus 1. This is another polynomial. Notice the coefficients here are precisely the first n minus 1 coefficients of f1 of z. So that f1 of z is the limit as n tends to plus infinity, so s prime n. Okay. Bless you. So, if we start from this fact, we have that f z minus f z naught over z minus z naught minus f prime of z naught okay turns out to be remember that the first part was this the incremental ratio of Sn then the incremental ratio of Rn right? And I can always add and subtract the same amount, obtaining the following. So I added and subtracted this complex number. Remember that z naught is in the radius of convergence, in particular of f, and this is a polynomial, so it is completely meaningful. Now you can notice that this is very close to be similar to what we studied in calculus one, right? And as I said, this is a polynomial. This function here is a polynomial in Z, so that in some sense, the terms you have to control is not, the terms are finite. The difficult part to control is this, all right? So next time, we'll complete the proof of this, and in fact, we'll use uh, an expression for this um, for this ratio here, and control the modulus of this expression, and show that this this uh, modulus com this series converges <coughs> as soon as z and z naught are in the radius of convergence. All right. I forgot to say that, of course, all these considerations are uh, can be repeated without losing any, ge any generality for a equal to zero. So center at the, at the origin, and in case I, I I I will forget next time, I just say now that from now on, for our consideration, we take a equal to zero. Okay. Okay, I stop here. Uh, stop here, and uh, thank you for your attention. And sorry for the inconvenience of the 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 homework, the missing homework, except for one of you. This was a ma my fault. I will send it again. Okay, please answer me back and say I received something. Okay, and that you can read it. Can you read it? Yes. Good. 
All right. So see you on Tuesday afternoon. Is it correct? Maybe 2 p.m., right? Good.